Hello there. I've been rebuilding one of my older print shift minis, uh, cannon fodder is this guy's name, with the intent of upgrading it to a radically simplified part ejector. It's also different in ways that'll hopefully become apparent in an upcoming video, but for today I was doing some exploratory surgery after I got tired of poking around in my CAD model. I would rather start with a fresh mini, but Earth is coming up and I'd really like to bring something new and cool, so this is that. This isn't meant to be a full build video, but I'll have one up once this setup is firing on all cylinders. This is based on an idea from Mike Molinari of Autodrop 3D fame. He's got his own part ejection system built around Delta printers as well as a cloud service to feed the machine. Worth a look, especially if you're interested in print shift style tech, so, you know, if you're watching this, you should check him out too. Hopefully he'll be at Earth again. Links to uh, both of those down below. See, the idea was to eliminate the motor and use a ratcheting system to actuate the ejector. And while I could try to implement something like that simply, I've been pursuing my own ideas of making the Mini more exciting as well. You might have already noticed that I managed to rotate the bed 90 degrees. This is possible with stock cables, although on cannon fodder here, I've replaced the bed wires a couple of times. I mean, this thing's had thousands of parts printed on it. Reasons for front ejection are more than just convenience, but this video is about the ratchet install though, so let's check out those parts first. Now, I'm still using the 10mm standoffs from the previous print shift. This heated bed is higher than normal Prusa by 4mm, but otherwise this rotation is all stock parts. You will need to fold the touchscreen down and out of the way, and the heated bed cover is like 2mm too big, but basically it doesn't really make a difference. This gets the heated bed out of the way so that you can build a front ejector. You can mount the uh, ejection belt front to back along the Y axis. I've remodeled the rod mounts so that they can slide right on and are stabilized by the rod itself. Each can take an M3 nut and screw to become a tensioner and holds onto the sealed ball bearing that I got off Amazon. You also still need an EPDM tube sleeve on the front rod so that you have a way to grip the belt and power it forwards. The main difference with this version of print shift is that the one-way ratchet should in theory allow you to move the Y bed all the way to front and inch your part forwards by moving the Y belt or the Y axis back and forth. I have spent a lot of time reading up on ratchets, pawls, and other famous pawls, but then I watched Zach Friedman's video on five 3D printing mistakes, I'll link that down below, and the bit about bike shedding really struck me as this project continued on. I don't think what I was doing was quite bike shedding, but I've done a lot of work on the software side of this, and I've done a lot of work on trying to make a ratchet mechanism work when you really could just buy one off the shelf. More on that later. In another classic, not taking my own advice fashion, I've also got some experimental bed stock too. Veridic stainless steel shim stock, which is thin enough to give you a paper cut and also quite magnetic, hopefully obviating some of the need and tension to get perfectly flat first layers. I'll be experimenting with this a bit more and I've got some magnetic sheets and whatnot too. Mm. Think that'll mess with the induction sensor? Yeah, probably. But for now we're going to try and install a one-way bearing and see if we can get a test print out of it.
instead of trying to reinvent the ratchet and pawl, I have purchased a one-way bearing, otherwise it's known as a sprag clutch, so that when the wheel is run in one direction, it does not actuate the rod. When it's gone in the right direction, it actually rolls the rod forwards. These cost a dollar. Cheaper and faster than the previous shaft collar adapter. Definitely spent too much time on that. Whoops. I am very pleased with this simplification, and if I got plans for the printer that can move its belt precisely in a direction perpendicular to the linear rail that the extruder travels along. Is that enough of a hint? Stay tuned, and I hope to see all of it. I'll be print shifting at the Nova Labs booth. Until then guys, happy printing.